Zumi's prayers, the divine brightness. Let us imagine that we are explorers of another century and of an exotic land and of no conception of what the land will be. An arduous sea voyage takes us across oceans, where by camel we caravan to the heart of a large continent. These things have been done, and much good came from them. After many difficult weeks and on the verge of turning back, we find behind a waterfall the entrance to a cave. The cave twists through the mountain, releasing into a vast hidden valley. The valley is filled with light, such that we imagine that all things will be new. We will be new. When we enter into the divine brightness of the Holy Spirit, we should not imagine that every believer is instantly filled and permeated with that brightness. On the con contrary, it is the Holy Spirit who's, who enters into that dark valley, which is the construct of our lives built up over many years. We do not describe ourselves as such, but we are filled with all manner of evil and treachery. Iniquities are piled up on every side. Horrible sins rise from underneath. Comparing ourselves to all those around us, we do not properly address the state of our being. We are in bitter spiritual misery. The temple of our being is a huge dark vault, our heart divided by many walls and partitions. Like Solomon's temple, it has many side compartments, ours full of secrets. Even the brightest light cannot at once penetrate the whole of us. From this, it follows that when the Spirit has entered a man's heart, your task is not ended, but only just begun. A task so difficult that only the power of the Holy Spirit can perform it. Your divine power does not force a man as though we were a stock or block, but by the power of love and compassion, so to influence and energize the impulses of our feeble will, that we feel its effects are inclined and finally consent to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our personality is thoroughly known to you, subjecting our most hidden impulses and intentions to the power of your love, and begin to prevail in us. Your word works both internally and externally to penetrate our unconscious and to bless us and to effect its power. This operation is different in each person, progressing quickly or slowly, checked by our serious reactions to your will for us. In some rare cases, it is overcome only with our last breath. This has been seen as a deathbed decision by a dying man, but it is not. There are scarcely two men in whom this gracious operation is completely the same. It is true that for much of our life we were at enmity with you, we were against you, but we are an enemy no more, commanded to depart from sin and are released from its dominion in our lives. We renounce our idols, usually unnamed even to ourselves. Renounce our sinful affections, the many things that seem indispensable to our joy in life. Over the top of this, you impose sacrifices, pursue us with difficulties, and cover us with scorn. Within, we find ourselves saying, I am not really a child of God. Think how shaped and filled we shall be, our smooth stone to the temple of your body and church. This is all beheld by you with an infinite pity, overcoming our resistance and casting it out from us with eternal mercy. How many years we struggle, how unyielding, restlessly opposing you, reluctant to face our own heart's recalcitrance. At last, we give to ourselves a compromise in our manner of life. But you do not cease, giving us no rest, knocking again, the shepherd speaking. In the end, our very bones are on fire and we cry out, 
Lord, you are stronger than I. You have prevailed. Our walls are broken down. Your light enters empty spaces. Doors opened, vaults unsealed. So that either before or in death, the outpouring of your brightness is complete in our personality. Our heart become your temple. We are fully sanctified at our entry to your full eternal life. Behold what love has given to us the Father, that children of God we should be called. The world knows not us because it knows not you, but now we do know you and you know us. Amen.